So today I'm going to show you how I use Autodesk Sketchbook to do my painted textured mandalas. So first I'm going to use the symmetry feature here and you can use as many sections as you want and then I lock the sections down. If I don't lock them then they would move around so I don't want them to shift around the page on me. And then the next feature that I'm going to use also is the predictive stroke. I love this feature in Autodesk Sketchbook. It uh, smooths out my stroke whenever I draw it. So it's a little bit like cheating, but I love how it works. So I'm just going to start by adding in some things. I've picked a 12 section symmetry. And I'm just going to do a really simple design here and then show you how I add in the texture afterwards and then remove the line art. I'll just show you this predictive stroke. If it was at set at one, that's what I get. Then I move it up to three. See how it rounds out your curves a little bit, especially when you're doing spirals. So I like it about middle ground. I don't want it to change too much of my stroke, but I love that it smooths it out. The pen that I use is in the basic section of the brushes and it's called fountain pen. It has a nice dark stroke to it and it also has a bit of um, difference in its thickness depending on the pressure and I like that look when I'm drawing. I, I like the realistic look of drawing with a real fountain pen. Now that I have this cute little design drawn I'm going to create a new layer and that's what I'm going to put my paint on. Go back to my line art. I'm going to turn off the predictive stroke and turn off the symmetry. I don't need those right now. I'm going to go into my selection area and I'm going to choose magic wand. Now I want to make sure that my tolerance is about middle area and I'm going to start selecting one area all the way around. The symmetry doesn't do this for you, so you just have to select those areas and make sure those little marching ants are there. Make sure you've got the add or it'll keep changing your selection. You want to add to your selection and you want these little marching ants around the areas that you've chosen. Now you're going to go into your new layer and I'm going to do a fill on this, but I'm going to do a radial gradient. The colors they give you are gray and black, but I'm going to change those up and all I have to do is click on the little dot and change the color. And I'm gonna go with an orange and pink to start with. You can kind of fiddle around here, that's the fun of it. Just keep changing the colors and seeing what you get. And then when you're done, you click on the fill and it will put it into the layer for you. I've created a new layer for my texture, but go back into your paint layer and change the blend mode to overlay. And that's gonna do the color and the texture that we're looking for. So now that I've got my new, my new layer, I'm going to go in and find a brush of texture that I like. There's quite a few in there, so you can kind of experiment around. I'm going to keep my ink black and make sure I'm drawing on my texture. But notice that even with black ink, it's because my layer above it is overlay, it brings out the color. So that's the trick of that. So just keep adding it till you're happy with it and you even get the gradient in there. And when you turn off your line art, you see that nice, so you can either get the gray or the color. So that's the basics, so let's keep moving through. So we, we pick selection tool, we make sure nothing is selected. We're on the line art layer and I'm gonna pick these ones, making sure all my marching ants are there. Move up to my color and I'm gonna use my fill tool and I'm maybe this one I'm just gonna do a straight fill. As long as I pick a color, see how it shows up on the layer, but it won't because it's an overlay right now and there's nothing under it. So I have to go to the texture See, it shows up there, but I hit the fill by mistake. So I just go backwards there. So now I got my texture brush and see how it shows up like that, but I want a different texture brush. So backwards I go and I look for a new texture and change it to black and there, fill it in like that. So that's a little intense for me. So maybe a little gray, actually, I actually think if I go in and pick no color, which removes color, that's better. I want it to be a little more washed out. So you can see what's showing up on each layer. The color layer won't show up until there's something under it because it's an overlay blend mode. Now we'll go on back into selection. Make sure that you X out your old selection and then you can pick a new selection. Make sure all your ants are marching because it's really easy to miss a spot. I don't really have a method to this. I'm just kind of experimenting as we go. So I'm trying out all the different textures. There's lots of different shape brushes, texture brushes, some of the Pastels are fun to use, this super greeny one. You kind of have to try them to see if you like them. So we're going to try this one. I'm going to keep my textures in the grays and the blacks. That's a little intense, so I'm going to lower the opacity on that one and maybe even the size of the brush. And then, yeah, I'll just 
draw that in there. I can always take some of this color back out after I've got it in and it will only color in where I've selected. So I'm going to go back and choose no color and then I'm just going to kind of dab some of that texture back out with the same brush. It's the same brush so you get the same texture you're just dabbing back out. It's like an eraser. So there you can see the textures in the gray. Now that I have the textures in the gray this is a good order to do it because then if I add in the color I'll see it right away. So I go with the same selection area still on, I'm going to do a radial gradient and then I'm just going to now try to choose my colors before but you actually have to put the gradient in and then change your colors. So I'm trying to mix it up a little here. I don't want everything to be pink and orange so let's see what the green does. Sometimes the thing with the gradient is it muddies out the color in the middle especially when you're doing texture because it's not a nice smooth transition. So I guess I'll stick, I want some purple in there but I'll stick to the orange. So I can keep checking it here by turning off my line art just to see if I like the look of it. Kind of getting a bit of a quirky design going on here. I X out the old selection, create a new selection. So I'm going to choose this outer one. Now I'm doing this on the iPad Pro and I'm using an Apple Pencil. I love using the Apple Pencil because it doesn't leave finger marks all over my screen which can really cause uh, issues when I'm using the Apple Pencil. It gets that caught up and, and skips but you could be doing this with your finger. I've done this with my finger on this particular process because you're not really working with any fine detail that the Apple Pencil would need. You're just painting. The painting works well with your finger. So I've chosen a different texture again and I make sure I'm on the texture layer. So you've got three layers here, your line art, your texture, and your color. So make sure you keep moving to the right one. So when I add the color, I'm now on the, the uh, color layer. And again, I'm just kind of messing around with the colors. I haven't really thought this out ahead of time and I'm kind of experimenting and playing. Sometimes I find that's the best way to learn something different about a program is just to let yourself experiment. So I'm trying to stay in the same ranges but get a little bit of different variation going on. I love doing the gradient, so I'm going to keep doing the gradient fill. I think I like that color. Yep, yeah, that works pretty good. So then we're going to move on to, we might as well keep going and finish this off and I'm going to pick the last set of sections on the outer part and I'm going to make sure that I pick them all. If you happen to forget one and you've already done it, um, just pick that one, go back to the color layer and put the gradient in and it'll look like it fits right into place as long as your gradient is put in the same direction as the first one that you did. And I'm going to go through here and pick another texture. I've moved over to the texture layer and I'm adding this texture in. It's kind of a gray so I'm going to add in some more dark just to give a little bit of uh, dimension the gray and the black. And then up to the color I go to the fill. I choose the radial gradient and I'm going to play around with the colors again. I kind of want to get a green in there but I don't want it to look mucky. So I kind of have to play around and see the nice thing is everything happens on this screen. It happens right away, but it doesn't apply it to your layer until you actually hit the fill button again. So you can just play around with it and it works faster that way because if it's not actually applying it to the layer, it speeds up the process and hit the fill and we're in. There we go. So I got a little bit of green in there that time. So I really have one more section here to fill. So into selection, make sure you X out on the right hand side there. You've got the little red X. Make sure that you X out the old selection first and otherwise you're going to be adding to it. So pick your new one and I'll put a little more texture. Let's make sure I've got everything selected there. Okay. On my texture layer, I'm going to add in some texture. Make sure I've got a brush pick. There we go. And I'm going to scribble that in there. There. That's what I wanted. I just had to make it a little bigger. Something a little different. And I'm going to add in my radial gradient on my color layer. I think I'm going to try to stay with that purple green gradient. And see how there was black in there? I just did a no color like an erase and take that back out. I can do, I can go back to the texture layer and change the texture even though the color is already in. And there you go. There is how you use texture in the Autodesk sketchbook to make a funky Mandela. So thanks for joining me today and I will see you soon.